Hi, I'm Danielle Olson, the Executive Director of Ecumen in Detroit Lakes. I'm here today to talk to you about some different options available to you as you look for services for your loved one. Long-term care has evolved over time, and so some of the things that may come to mind when you think about long-term care may just be like the nursing home. However, there are so many other things that we have to offer as long-term care communities that could benefit you no matter where you are in your search process. One of the easiest ways to transition from home could be using independent living. Independent living is apartment style living where a person just simply transitions from their home to an apartment. So they have a lot of the same amenities, they bring all of their things from home that would fit in their apartment and they continue to live life as they did before. Some of those, um, some people feel when they move from a home, they have to downsize and they may not have enough space. Some providers have garages, which is perfect for a car when a person moves to independent living or even additional storage space as they work to downsize from a home to an apartment style living. One of the really cool things about independent living are the built-in friendships that can occur. As someone transitions from home to independent living, they are now surrounded by like-minded people. They may find people who have similar interests to them and form little groups or large groups of just friends and the socialization that occurs can be really cool for families to see and very beneficial for the person who's moved out of their home into independent living. Another apartment style option is assisted living. Assisted living is a very broad term and can be interpreted many different ways which can be very consuming, confusing for the customer. One of the best things that I can offer as advice to you is to look at different assisted living buildings. So these are usually buildings in which there's an apartment style of living, but then also some services to provide an enhanced level of care that you may not find at independent living. It would be a wise idea to look at different assisted living communities, tour the buildings, and specifically look at their rate packages. What we have seen in our industry is different communities market their packages differently. Some may have a base package with different services, others may offer a la carte. So find a couple communities and loca or locations within your community that are of interest to you, take a tour, look around at the building, and then look at their packages. So knowing a little bit about what your loved one would need, do they need some help with medication management, setup of medications, maybe some light housekeeping, laundry, even assistance with activities of daily living. So they may need some help with dressing, grooming, bathing. All of those things are likely available in some package or a la carte option in assisted living. But the best way to know is to look at different facilities and look at their packages and talk to the staff there to see what makes the most sense. And then do um, your own comparison if price is important to you, that's where you're going to see the biggest differences. Most of those facilities offer on-site care to those who are purchasing the packages. So that may also be something you want to look into. Just because you move into one of those buildings may not guarantee that someone is going to be checking on you unless you purchase that package. Another option for people with an enhanced level of care is the skilled nursing home. Um, we sometimes see a variety of people utilizing the nursing home. Some people utilize the nursing home for a short period of time when they're using therapy services. Perhaps they've had a recent hospitalization or injury and their provider feels like they would benefit from some physical, occupational, or even speech therapy. They can come to the nursing home, stay for a few days, a few weeks, or even a couple of months while they receive therapy. And working with the therapy team, they will work towards their goal, which is to go home to whatever setting they call home. Some people in the nursing home will live here long term. Within the long-term care area, there may even be facilities that utilize memory care areas. In those areas, it can be a secured environment offering a skilled level of care like you see in long-term care. However, there's just a greater um, enhanced security as far as maybe locks or different ways to get in and out of the doors, which keep the population inside of that area safe as well as the um, dedicated staff in those areas to care for those with memory care needs.
We also offer, through our therapy services, as do many providers, outpatient therapy. Someone may come to us and stay in the nursing home for a period of time utilizing our therapy services and go home. Once they're home, they may need a little bit of therapy at home. Their provider may suggest outpatient therapy where they would come on um, an as-needed basis or per the treatment plan to our facility. They would work with the therapy team and at the end of their session they would go home. It's just like having an, an appointment at the clinic, you're just simply coming to the nursing home therapy area, working with our therapist, getting your services, and then returning home at the end of the day. And you may do that as long as the therapists feel that you are making progress or your provider deems appropriate. Also people within the nursing home and assisted living and independent living buildings could also benefit from outpatient therapy. Again, working with their provider, they could get a referral to our therapy department and then they could get the therapy services that they need. They could simply walk across the street, take the bus, however they get to us, utilize the service and then return to their home. Another option that we have on a campus, as is probably available in our community, is a service called Adult Day Services. This is a great program for people um, who are maybe caregivers and still have to go to work or are otherwise committed during the day. This is a program where people are able to come to us for a period of time, it might be a few hours a day, up to you know a full day in which they're in an environment with several other people doing activities, having social opportunities, meals, sometimes even assistance with bathing. This is a great option for primary caregivers who need to work or otherwise committed during the day and may feel that their loved one would benefit from socialization or just don't feel like they should remain at home when they are gone for such long periods of time. Another option that is available is respite care. Someone can come to maybe the nursing home for a few days, um, could be you know one to two days or even three to five days in which the caregiver just gets a break. Maybe the primary caregiver is going out of town for the weekend or a person is at end of life, which is a time when the caregiver is very, very busy and can be very mentally taxed. They can come to the facility, receive great care from our trained team and give the primary caregiver a break and then they return home. A person could do this once or they could do this multiple times. Another thing that we do is we partner with hospice agencies. And so when someone is at end of life, they can remain in their home, whether it's independent living, assisted living, or the nursing home, and they can receive those services with one of our hospice partners. There's added care that is provided to the tenant or the resident, and the family also benefits from having some services available through the hospice agency as well. One of the things to look for when you are looking for your loved one is a campus setting. A campus setting can be very beneficial if your loved one would start at a lower level of care such as independent living. The person has the opportunity to advance their care throughout the entire building. Maybe they start in independent living. As their needs change, they can buy enhanced services to remain in their apartment. Perhaps they are no longer able to safely remain in their apartment and they need a skilled level of care, they can very easily transition to the nursing home. A lot of the um, staff may be still familiar because they're on the same campus. They might even be familiar with how the building is laid out from participating in different things such as worship services or different activities. And they can continue to um, move throughout the campus as their needs change, but they're still in the same um, campus community. If that's not an option for you, there are a lot of singular providers providing maybe just independent living, assisted living, or skilled care within our community. And the best thing to do is to just talk to those providers, do some tours, and compare them. Some resources that are available, especially for skilled care, is the CMS 5-star rating, which is available through a simple web search. You can 
simply Google CMS five star rating. And you can enter in a location. So if you're looking in the Detroit Lakes area, you can type in our zip code, you could search by county and it will show you um, the providers in the area and how they rate as far as their quality measures, their staffing ratios, and their health inspection ratings. Facilities with a five star have the highest rating um, and then it goes all the way down to one star facilities. And you could see which facilities are rated the highest. Maybe that's important to you when you're making your decision. There's also something called the nursing home report card, which is what the state of Minnesota uses. Again, a simple Google search will lead you to the Minnesota report card and will show you the, some of the same things, such as the quality measures and, and um, private room rates and the rates that the provider charges. Um, again, this is primarily for skilled care, um, but those are two great resources that you can utilize when you're looking at your search. You can also just do simple Google searches. Um, if there's a provider that you'd like to choose, Google that provider. You can see some reviews come up. I would caution you though to do a little bit more research. Sometimes people have a bad experience at a facility and they may leave in a, a kind of a bad rev or a negative review of that facility. That may, may be isolated to that person. Maybe there wasn't good communication to the provider um, to help remedy those problems. So I would, I would look at those reviews, but also just maybe do some of your own research. You could even look at the review, interview the provider and say, I noticed this when I did a Google search or a web search of your um, company. What, what can you tell me about this? and maybe there's something they, they would offer you about a solution to that problem that was maybe was a remedy and isn't reflected in that review. Another good way is by just simply talking to people that maybe live there or, or have lived there in the past. Um, if you hear a lot of similar things, like they have really good care there, you hear that from multiple people, that could be a very good indicator that that might be a place you want to continue looking into for your loved one. If you hear multiple um, things that have you concerned, um, that might lead you to maybe do some more talking with the provider, again bringing specific things to them and see how they handle that, or maybe you just move on to another location within your community. Um, there's a a resource called the Senior Linkage Line, which is a 1-800 number that can be called and you can talk to a representative, um, tell them about some things you're seeing with your loved one, what types of um, assistance that person may be needing, and the person at the Senior Linkage Line will be able to direct you within your community to some facilities or services that would be beneficial to your loved one. Another option is home care services. So those are offered typically by providers and can be done in a variety of settings. Perhaps you live in an independent living building, you could get home care services um, from a provider while you're still in your apartment. Maybe you live at home and you're in the community. There are also home care services available in the community where the staff go right to you. Maybe they help you with some light housekeeping, some of your bathing that week. Um, even we could work um, with other providers to get some meals to your house. There's a lot of different services available to keep people in their homes or even in their apartments for a long period of time. When you are looking for a provider or a service, it is not a bad thing. Long-term care facilities, whether it's apartments or skilled nursing facilities, can be very vibrant. There are a lot of people that have a great time living there knowing they don't have the burdens they once had at home. They don't have to do yard work, they don't have to do snow removal, they don't have to do general um, housekeeping and the maintenance on their house. And there's so many friendships that form when they're in our buildings um, that it's just a great thing to see. It can be very scary having someone move from their home to a new environment. Maybe you're not always able to be there um, and you're really trusting the provider, but our business is trust and we take great pride in knowing that you have selected us to take care of your loved one and we will work with you as much as we can to ensure it's a very smooth process and that your loved one is taken care of the best that we possibly can.